But the main story of the night doesn't concern the spirit of competition, but a man who's judged to have cheated. Ben Johnson celebrated on Saturday as the Olympic 100 metres champion, the fastest man of the world, fails a drug test, is stripped to the gold medal and leaves the Olympic city in disgrace. And through the night we watched the story unfold. A shameful story, all the more shameful, because it concerned a man who arrived at these games as a great hero of world sport. Ben Johnson, Canada. The gold medal, the world championship, and a new world record. 9.83 seconds, an incredible one-tenth of a second of the old record. And when you're dealing in fractions, in an event as short as this, this is one of the truly great performances in track and field history. Medaille d'or, the gold medalist, Ben Johnson, Canada. And now, Ben Johnson steps forward. The man who said at the beginning of the season he could do 9.79. Nobody believed him, but he's done it where it matters most of all, in the Olympic arena. Well, I was surprised because this time, I mean, Ben made a tremendous uh, you know, drop, really, in, in 24 hours because you know, he, he just wasn't the same person Friday as he was Saturday, and it was just, that race was shocking. Um, I just don't know how he does it or whether he, he, he gets a hypnotist or something, but he does something to um, stimulate him in the finals. There will be no IOC no. officials making any statement here whatsoever no, this morning. No. Only at uh, the uh, main press center. Can you tell us who will be at the press center tomorrow? Uh, I will be at the today. press center at 10 o'clock. And there will be a statement? Yes. If there is something to announce, I don't know. If oh, 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 come on. Come on what? Come on what? Huh? What do you think I've been up until 2, uh, 2 a.m.? Huh? It's my fault? The mood in the village is not one of shock because Ben Johnson is one of the athletes that's been under a cloud of suspicion for a long while, as is his coach, Charlie Francis. But I think one of the things that Ben Johnson did was to take a risk of taking this anabolic steroid near the final because he was up against it and there was three million dollars riding on it. And the other effect of anabolic steroids, of course, is for the aggression that it brings out, not just the training effect. And that's where I think he took the risk. It was the biggest fish. It's the most important uh, name in the Olympic movement. And I don't think the Olympic movement has got anything to be ashamed of. I think they, unlike some of the federations, are declaring the big fish. And that's why the shock waves have gone around the Olympic village. And that's why some of the athletes will be in fear and trepidation right now. We will not start the press conference unless everybody is in position. I was just woken up this morning about half an hour ago by Tony Warden, Les Jones, uh, assistant team manager, and they told me the story. I'm very, very shocked about it, and not just for Ben, but for the sport. I mean, it's been a very sad day for athletics on the whole. Calvin, what's your reaction to the news? Well, I'm very pleased because um, I feel that all the athletes should be clean going into the games, and that um, the best person should win. And um, that wasn't the case for the 100 here, and. I'm just happy that justice is served. And this recommendation has been unanimously approved by the IOC Executive Board. The urine sample of Ben Johnson, Canada, Athletics 100 meter, collected on Saturday 24 September 1988, was found to contain the metabolites of a banned substance namely stanozolol, it's an anabolic steroid. The IOC Medical Commission discussed all arguments presented by the Canadian delegation, especially the statement that the substance in question might have been administered after the competition by a third party. The steroid profile, however, is not consistent with such a claim. The IOC Medical Commission recommends the following sanction. Disqualification of this competitor from the games of the 24th Olympiad in Seoul. The decision remains independent of any sanction which the International Federation concerned may wish to apply in accordance with its own regulations. That's the of course, the gold medal has been withdrawn by the IOC.
I'm absolutely astonished that anybody of that caliber should try and take anabolic steroids. He knew that he was, with any luck, he was going to get a placing, and, and we all know that the first, second, and third are drug tested. So I cannot understand why he took such a risk. Can you tell us what happened? Uh, we've had approximately 15 cases in the last two or three years um, positive to this particular substance. As far as health dangers are concerned, this is one of the most dangerous anabolic steroids known uh, because its structure is such that its uh, effect on the liver uh, can lead to a number of disturbances, including liver carcinoma or cancer. Anabolic steroids are widely used. Unfortunately, I don't know whether you know it or not, but right before I left for Seoul, uh, a smuggling uh, chain was discovered in my own country that had smuggled 200 kilograms of anabolic steroids into my country. So that gives you an impression of the magnitude of misuse. Now, this does not ref refer to our sport, because those, those are used, I know, by bodybuilders and the like. But it is a used drug, and that's why it's on the banned list, and that's why it's analyzed for. The information I was able to gather indicates that Mr. Johnson was tested for the last time in the Montreal laboratories in February of 1988, seven months ago. That's the last time Ben Johnson was tested. He must have been clean then. Sadly, Ben Johnson's been caught this time. Well, the process started when the doping tests proved positive in respect of Ben Johnson. He was called to the IC Medical Commission uh, late last night, in fact, early this morning, with a delegation from the Canadian team. The matter was discussed with them. At the end of that, the Medical Commission came to the conclusion that uh, they should put a recommendation to the executive board that in finding that uh, Ben Johnson's doping was positive, he should be disqualified from competition. The executive board convened at 9 o'clock this morning, heard the evidence, and unanimously agreed that that should be the case. Is it a bad day for the Olympic movement, though, or is it a good day in one sense that the top athlete is being found out? Well, I, I think it's sad. I think it's sad that this should have happened. But I think it's a good thing that, it, uh, that uh, the IOC has very strong lines. Uh, and I, I remember the time of Moscow, there were reinstated uh, athletes competing whom I, I consider should not have been reinstated by the then president of the IAAF. But he, he had his, his rules and I had mine. I, I had no way about it. But these are matters for the president of the IOC and the executive of the IOC generally. This, uh, this drug has the reputation, unfortunately, in athletics of being undetectable. We now know that it isn't. It also um, has the reputation of being, of persisting in the body for quite a short time after interruption of treatment. So, and thirdly, uh, it is known that athletes use regimens of anabolic steroid administration, meaning that they can take steroids for two, three, four weeks, interrupt a week or two, and then resume again. It's not totally um, inconceivable uh, that th in this particular case, uh, the timing was wrong. We left the Schiller Hotel, the chief medical officer and myself at 3.30 a.m., met with Ben and Ben's mother and his sister, as well as his coach and his manager. We gave them the full details of the hearing, the results of that hearing. We received back Ben's gold medal from him, and we had, at that time, the unfortunate task of removing Ben from the Canadian team. Ben is now en route back home. I want to close with a couple of comments. Yesterday and today have been an incredibly difficult time, both for me as head of the Canadian team and for those of my colleagues who were aware of the events that were unfolding. In particular, it's a, a very, very sad day and a very, very sad situation in the Olympic Village at this time. We're acutely aware of how devastating this news will be to millions of people. The people of Canada and Jamaica in particular have been elated since the 100 meter final. And today that joy will be replaced by pain. I wish there was something that I could say or we could say that would relieve that pain, but there is not. 
And I assure you, though, that the heartbreak is shared by all of us who are part of the Canadian Olympic team. International sport, the Olympic sport, is in a situation where we have to deal with the issue head on. Uh, it's unfortunate uh, for Ben and his family that this had to, to happen in this manner. Uh, I don't think anyone ever expected uh, for the situation to develop like this. And in the end, I think that uh, we might have some positive benefits in sports in terms of uh, having more testing during the training season, which I've been talking about for years in terms of the only solution to the doping problem and uh, and all we can do is go for go go from there and see what's uh, what's going to develop all of the athletes uh, feel that you know some of the athletes are on drugs and um, we're just hoping that you know the, the uh, process of testing becomes better and better that they can catch them and make it a clean sport and a better sport I feel that you know in uh, not only the men, but also the women, that if you get the best system for testing, then uh, I feel that there will be a lot of new leaders uh, in the world in, in, in a lot of sports. So far in the history of drug testing, once the second test has proved positive, there is no way back, not through the courts or anywhere else, and the IOC wouldn't put their reputation on the line unless they were absolutely certain. Remember that Ben Johnson was tested after the 100 meters. They've had 48 hours to mull over this, and the IOC, unlike some of the federations, have come clean and made absolutely certain that the world knows that they are not going to hide any dirt under the carpet. And, uh, and that's why it's an important thing. You know, uh, there are many that will say that this Olympic flame is diminishing today. I think it's never burned brighter unless it was 1972 when the Olympic movement was threatened by murder and terrorism. I think the only way forward is that good should never give way to evil, and this is evil that's being exposed, and I think they were right to expose it. Ben Johnson, stripped of the gold, which goes now to Carl Lewis, silver for Britain's Linford Christie, and bronze for Calvin Smith. Implications not only for Canada, not only for the Olympic movement, but the whole of world sport. Barry Davis is talking now to our own Minister for Sport, Colin Moynihan. Minister, can I ask you your first reaction when you heard that Ben Johnson had had his go 